Welcome back to Python application programming. So we were discussing about list, right? So we told true, 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 and then we have false, but the value was 20, right? So we'll continue with that and check why it was like false, right? Uh, in the last session, we understood like, okay, how do I identify an element whether it is there in the list using in. So we told nine in in true, got it. 15, it's not there, false. But 20, 20 is not there, but why did we get true here? Right? So, if you cross check it, what are we calling? We are telling not in. Right? So, what are we doing? We are trying to check whether the element 20 is not inside this list. What is it we are using? Not in. So, 20 is not there. Hence, we got this as true. So, again, right? So, 9 in. So, in the case I am trying to check what 9 as an element is there inside the list? Yes, we got true. 15 as an element inside this? No. So, we got false. Now, 20 not in. So, in that case, I am trying to check 20 is not inside this list. Yes, it is not there. So, hence it is true. So, two operators, one in and not in, right? What are they trying to tell us? Like whether this element is inside the list or this element is not inside that list. So, based on whether its existence or does not exist, we have a true and false, right? So, Python has two operators that helps us in checking whether about the item, whether it exists or does not exist. So, we have two things, one is in, second one is not in. What is the output? Output is always a boolean, either true or false. Right? Now, so uh, this is there, right? So, here what are we trying to do? It is only kind of checking here, right? So, in that case, whether an element exists inside this or not, using an in and not in. But we are not trying to do anything with the elements here. So, we are not modifying the list, right? It is only trying to check whether the elements are there inside the list or not using two operators in not in right so what is in existing true if it doesn't exist false right f then not in this element is not inside this if yes that is true what do you mean by true the element is not inside so false if the element is inside because it is not in now in our example if you take uh, 10 10 not in some 10 it is there so in that case our output will be false Now, uh, we do have another function called sort, a sort which will order, which will order what? Members of a list, right? So, if you take this example, you have friends where ordering is nothing to do with us for the elements inside the list. So, when I tell friends dot sort, so elements of the list get sorted. So, if you look at G, J, S, G, J and S, so all the elements got sorted in the in terms of what? In terms of alphabetical order, right? So now you go back, you tell print friends of one, print friends of one. So this is our friends. When you tell friends of one, this is zero is Joseph, but what is our output? Right? So we should be very careful. We are overwriting. When I call friends dot sort, the value that gets sorted will be updated for friends list. So, this we have to keep in mind, okay. Uh, a list can be sorted that is changing its order, right. Now, very important is this point, sort yourself. So, indicating what? This elements get sorted and once they get sorted, the elements will stay as it is. So, when this got sorted, Joseph before sorting, Joseph was at index 0 after sorting he came at index 1, right? So, when I try to print who is at 1, I am able to see that Joseph. If there were no changes, then I should have got, right? So, but the changes occurred and the changes are applicable or reflecting in the original list and I am able to access the, the original list, the changed one. So, you should be very careful when you are trying to use sort, it, it keeps changing the original list. Now, we came across in our previous session when we discussed about looping structures, right? I have set of numbers, I want to find the sum of those numbers, I want to find the average, I want to find uh, maybe what is the minimum, what is the maximum for which we wrote all the functions, right? So, we wrote a code to find a min, we wrote, we wrote a code to find the sum, uh, we put all this inside a for loop, each time I access, add them together, divide by the numbers, where I get an average and so on. But 
we do have a built in function that is are available right. So, now if you look at I have a list with these numbers I have a list with these numbers where my list name is nums. So, now I can print nums which will tell me right 3, 41, 12, 9 and 74. I can also print call function len I get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 elements are there print max of num where it is 74 right then print min of uh, num where it is the value is 3 then we have print sum of num so sum of all this right so now I know the sum of num I know how many elements are there I can divide I where I will be able to get able to get an average so I will tell print sum of num divided by len of len of num so where I get an average average 25. Now, if these functions are not available, then what should we do? Yeah, very simple. Functions are not available, write a loop for that, right? Write a code to find these things, right? How do you find a max? You run a for loop. Every time you get a first element, compare that with the next element that you are accessing. If it is greater, store that in a variable called max. After everything is done, print it. So, where you will be able to get a maximum number. Similarly, min, similarly, sum and all this. But what is the best advantage that we have? We have built in functions which will help us in terms of when it is com coming down to a list. So, if it is a list, I can call these functions get my work done. Now, so one small program, right? So, what this program is doing just to uh, as a dry run, we will go through that total equal to 0, count equal to 1, while true, it became an infinite loop, right? Now, a raw input enter a number. So, we got a new number into this. Now, if it is done, then I am breaking. So, if it is not done, then I am here where I am converting that into a float value, storing in a value, then I am totaling it. What is the initial value of total? 0. So, 0 plus value. So, in the case, this total is nothing but in our previous example, it is sum. Then, what am I doing? Count equal to count plus 1. What is the initial value of count? 0. It is nothing but my in initial program, it is nothing but the variable which is used to find the length, right? How many members are there? So, this is a while loop. So, once it breaks, when? When you tell done. When you tell done, it breaks out. Once it breaks out, we will come out of that and we are finding total, that is sum, divided by count, that is len. We find the average, we are printing it. Now, to achieve this, what did we do in Python if it was a list? Very simple. Len we got, sum we got. So, we told, so if I can directly use one line, print sum, nums, slash nums, which is nothing but my average, done. But what did we do here? So, we wrote a code to find the sum of it, to count it and then divide, sum divided by the count, we got the average. So, look at the facility that is available if it is a list in nature, right. So, this program if we run, enter a number 3, 9, 15, sorry 5, then we have a done, once it is done, we come out of the while loop. So, done, we came out of the while loop, then we are finding the average and then we display that average, right. So, now if it was a list, then instead of writing all this, we could have directly written for total as sum and for count as alien, we got our answer. Now, how do we make sure that we read a value like this and still we use the facility of this function, right? What is it? We get a number from the user, but along with that number, we should get the facility of using that as a list. So, what are the requirements? Our requirement is what? One, we have set of numbers that is coming from the user, but if I want to use my previous slide functions like sum, len, what is the requirement? That it should be a list. It should be a list. So, now what am I supposed to do? The numbers that I get, you need to update that to a list. Once it is list, I need not run this. I can directly tell sum divided by len. So, we will look into it. How? I will create one empty list. We will create one empty list. Num list equal to list. Then while true as it is because we need to get the elements till it is done, right? So, raw input get a value store it in a variable INP. Then if INP is done break come out of the while loop. If not, we are converting into value, right? So, float value that is still the same. Now, instead of performing total and count we will not do. What are we supposed to do? 
add an element to a list. So now this value I want to add to a list. We know if it is an empty list, we have a function called append. Look at that. Num list dot append this value, right? So this whole thing is a while loop. So every time I read a number, I append that to my list. So once I tell done, I am out. So I have finished my input. What is my next step? Display the average. So what is the function? Sum of num list divided by len of num list, which I am storing in a variable called average. So I am printing average. So now look at that. Here, same concept, but I need to have a total. I need to find a count and then use that the concept of total divided by count. But here, I keep updating that to my list and I use my built-in functions to find, right? So, this is one advantage where the numbers if I generate or if I rearrange them as list, I have lot of built-in functions which are available with list, we can use that and get our job done, right? Now, whether should I use this or this? Always this, right? So, there are chances that as a programmer, I may make a mistake here, but here, all these are the built-in functions which are thoroughly tested and to 100 percent accuracy. So, I can depend on the built-in functions. In case, if built-in function is also not available, yeah, definitely we do not have any other option. We will try to write a code something similar to this for our requirement. Okay. So, okay, here A, B, C equal to C, single quote. So, in that case, this became a string. This became a string. So, now abc dot split, abc dot split. So, we did not, okay, what is the parameter here for split? Nothing. So, if I do not specify a parameter for split, in that case, delimiter is not available. So, you have a string, you want to break that. What is your delimiter? Parameter missing. So, by default what? Space. Always blank space. So, any programming language whenever you have a split function, if a parameter is not passed or delimiter is not being told, then it will be a, a blank line. Sorry, not blank line, a blank space, right? For a string, for a string, keep this in mind, right? So, now you have abc dot split. abc is a string. So, in that case, when you split this, what do we get? With three words, with three words, good, right? Now, when you print, what is that you are able to see, right? So, we got with three word, but one special thing that occurred here, right? So, when you look at that with three word, where after splitting what we got are enclosed in square bracket, which indicates that they became now as a list. So, we had a string, we were able to convert that into a list. So, now once it is a list, you can apply the function. What are those functions? You can find the length of a stuff where it says 3. You can find what is at index 0, which is nothing but width, right? This is the advantage where you have. You can convert a string into a list. You have lot of functions that you can apply on that. Right? So, split breaks a string into parts, produces list. Right. So, once it is a list, you have lot of advantages that you can do. Right. So, example, if this is a list, you can perform a sorting on that, you can perform how many words are there, counting, everything can be done. Like example, how many words are there in this list? So, how to identify? Okay, break, uh, blank space, no, nothing, no. You tell len. We get number of words that are there in that particular list. So, each, because it is a string, whatever you are breaking is based on the blank space, so it becomes a word. So, automatically the number of elements in the list is nothing but number of words in the string. Okay. Another example here, right? So, where a, 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 a different concept trying to understand what is the delimiter, what is the delimiter, right? Okay. We have a string by name line and where this is the string a lot many blank spaces of space, right? So, in the case lot and of you have lot of blank spaces here. So, we will tell another string etc equal to line dot split and what about the delimiter? Yeah, simple delimiter missing blank space. So, now a l o t of space should be my 
after calling split are my members we will cross check print etc a lot of space now what happened there are a lot of blank spaces here but all this got clubbed into one blank space so a after that blank space lot blank space of blank space space so you go 1 2 3 4 words so 1 2 3 and 4 words right now uh, this is another example of a string line is another string name right string variable name where you have first second third but you have a semicolon as part of your content of the string so now what we'll do simple we'll call a split function on this now how to call a split function line dot split and what is the parameter missing by default blank space so now first semicolon all this okay blank space we got what is next nothing so in that case we have only one element and this will be converted into a list with one element so look at that first second third all combined into one so when you find the length we get one see we get one right now we will take one advantage of passing a parameter to a split function right now look at i call the same line this is the this is the input right it's a string it's a string with values as first semicolon second semicolon third and what is the name of the string line so i'll tell line dot split i pass a parameter semicolon so now what am i telling split the string into smaller parts where my delimiter is a semicolon so it will start with first f i r s t semicolon stop so this becomes my first member semicolon s e c o n d semicolon stop this becomes my second member then t h i r d end of it this becomes my third member so in that case when i split i should get three members first comma second comma third so look at that print thing print thing so we got first second third with a comma so in that case when i tell length of thing i should get three yeah we got it right so split is a function which can help us to convert a string into a list of strings into a list of strings where what is the function name what is the function name split option no parameter by default blank space by default blank space or i can mention the delimiter on which character you want to split the string example the semicolon so i am telling that take the string break that into smaller parts where my delimiter is or breaking character is a semicolon so before semicolon stop get all that into another after semicolon whatever i read till my next existence of semicolon will be my next word or next element in the list okay so that's what right when you do not specify a delimiter right in our examples we did not specify right so what happened multiple spaces are treated as one delimiter right so going back this one multiple spaces right so it's one blank one blank here one blank here one blank here like this blank spaces like this were treated as what one blank when it was by default right that's what when a delimiter is missing so it is that by default multiple spaces are treated as one delimiter okay done next you can specify the delimiter character so as a programmer i can specify like example semicolon here so what did we do we put a semicolon as a delimiter so based on semicolon we got them into three different members for the list so missing multiple delimiters are considered as one delimiter but when you specify it will be appropriately one occurrence of it okay so this is an example uh, where we will be using uh, the function called split right so majority of the time you have a huge text file right in file handling course right uh, last uh, few days back we had discussed about uh, how do i handle file in python right so in that also we took an example i have a text file i'll try to read the data from the file after reading i do some processing right so that processing can also be trying to identify like who sent a mail and uh, uh, what was the date and time when i got that mail or maybe the subject line so where i want to split 
rest of that I want to discard. I want to figure out only that line. In that line also I can figure out like what is required for me, date and time or year and then based on that I can split it. Right? So if you take this example, you have a text, you have a text. What is that text? This is the text. This whole thing happens to be our text to be processed. Right? This is our text to be processed. Right? Okay. So here, if this is our text to be processed, what are our, what are we doing? One, we'll we'll what we'll do now? Uh, forget about this code. Right? So we'll go with the program. Right? So I, I'll type line equal to. So all this I am copying into a a string by name line. Okay. Next. So this whole thing got into that. Then we'll split. We'll split. Now. I am not specifying any delimiter here. So, split on what? Blank space. So, in the case after from you have a blank space. So, this becomes my first element. This whole thing will become my second element, third element, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh element. Right. So, in the case I have seven elements. So, now after I split without delimiter. So, it is a blank space. I, I am trying to store that in words, print words. So, you will see from is one. Then Stephen till Z A is one, Saturday is one, Jan is one, five is one, then 0, 9, 14, 16 is another one, then 2000. So in that case count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, we told right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7, right. So this is, so once I get that, this, then what is required? Yeah, definitely we can figure out how. Using a regular expression, I can identify that any of this I can use an operator in with a regular expression which will be covered in the subsequent sessions with at symbol and a regular expression. So I have an at symbol here. So I can check whether this pattern exists in this. If yes, then that line has what? Yeah, definitely that line has a something called as an email, right? So I know the format. So based on that I can pick that, I can refer who has sent the mail from where the mail has come, lot of processings can be done. So this is one example where we try to use this, right? Now this we did in what? Command line. Can I write a program? Definitely yes. So look at that, it, it, this complete is what? Recall the file handling, right? So we are opening a file, this is my file name and this is my file handler. Then I read, start reading line by line. How? For line in the file handler, I read the first line. What is R strip? you may have lot of blank spaces, right? So those on the right hand side, so you will you'll strip that. It can be on the left hand side, you strip that. You call strip, where on the left hand side and right hand side, all the blank spaces will be stripped, right? So if not, so if not what? You are trying to check. The line starts with from. So in that case, you are telling continue. So in that case, go back to, what is continue? Read my next line. If the line starts with from, if the line starts with from, they pick that, that is what we are doing. If it is not starting, go back, that is what continue does. So once it is true, then where is the content? Content is inside line, now you split that, split line dot split, you got that into words. Now in the words, I know that always, always in the format from, always this will be my email, from where I am getting my mail, from where I got my mail, right. So now what I can do, after I split, it is an list. Now this index is always 1, this index is always 1. So I can tell print words of whatever the index that I want, the index that I want. Now in case I want to identify on which day, on which day the mail has come. So I can tell this is 0, this is 1, this is 2. So I, I can print word of 2 which will tell me what, on what day the mail has come. So these formats are fixed, hence I am able to access them, right? Then I can tell which month or day or time or maybe the year based on what is required for me, right? So in our example, what are we printing? Print words of 2. So 2 is nothing but this one, like whether the mail has come on Monday or Tuesday or Saturday or so on, right? So this is how we can convert a string. Here what are we reading is a string, right? So that string we are trying to split, I get a list. Once I have a list, I can do lot of operations on the list. So where are we or what mechanism is used to convert a string into a list, right? 
are we creating an empty list adding them together that is one option what a second option split method split method is the next option where we can convert a given string into small parts and place them into a list so once they get into list we have lot of advantages easy processing okay so if you look at this uh, like uh, example here so we may split we split a line one way then grab that line and then split that again like example we'll go back here okay so here if you look at this portion it's nothing but the code that we have identified so now what is line it's a string the complete this whole thing is a string then what did we do we split right now this we have only one line here and we are splitting that line and trying to do some processing now go back to this program right check out this program there is a big file where you have lot of lines you have lot of lines right so now what are we doing in this we are trying to pick up only those lines which are applicable for us what are we checking every line which is starting from one i i need so i'll check first line it is not starting from one so discard continue it will go back again this line it has from so consider this is not there this is not there this is not there yeah this line has from consider that not there not there not there not there so in the totally in the whole of the file i have only two entries where it starts from from so now what i am doing i am splitting so the first line i take i split them into words and i am storing it here so in words i have the complete line i have the complete line now what can i do in that i am trying to access word of 2 so 0 1 and 2 it's nothing but day so you look at the output we got only the day now after i split i have something on that split part i am trying to do a processing on that so sometimes we split a line one way and then grab one of the pieces of the line and split them again pieces into again right so like example we can take right okay we'll do one thing we'll consider on the email part now how to grab that yeah it's a string this whole thing is a string we'll convert that into a list so that i can access this with index 1 how to convert split so we'll tell line dot split so we got this words what is words words are nothing but from comma stephen dot uh, all this comma sat comma jan comma and so on so totally 1 2 3 3 4 5 5 6 7 7 7 totally seven members okay now all these seven members are separated by comma yeah we know that so now what i'll do is i'll pick up only this part so we split a line okay we got it next we grab that piece yes we got it now we do further processing so i want to split this whole of this so this is nothing but what words of one words of one now i'll split words of one i'll call a function split what will i do this whole thing is stored in email this whole thing is stored in email it's nothing but email now what will i do i'll tell email dot split email dot split and pass a parameter to that now what should be my parameter i want maybe at symbol as a parameter so that it divides into two halves so in that case i can i am able to tell what okay who sent the mail and what is the domain from where the mail has come in right then i can use this and divide them using split using dot and i can figure out from which country the mail is coming in so i can process that that's what the double split pattern is right so based on some criteria i split i get that i grab that text or i grab that material that material again i split based on my requirement grab it so that split can be done so this is nothing but a 
a concept of double split or maybe multiple you can do that. So, in our example I am splitting on a at symbol. So, in that case So, I am splitting on at symbol right. So, in that case this has to split into two halves. So, I should be able to get a list with two members Stephens and second member UCT. So, look at that first member second member right. So, in that case I can split whatever I get as a result for that result I can split again and convert that into a uh, uh, list access that list get the members of it it's, it becomes very easy. So, uh, this is a code right. So, what did I tell like uh, we first time we split we get that and then split on ampersand we get two into things that is what we have done here right. So, we are trying to get the value try to display for here and here what are we doing here we are splitting right. So, in the case we are splitting and trying to look at what is the output. Right? So, this is the example of double split. Now, so what we had discussed right. So, list is one concept it is a collection of elements where we do not have any restriction on the data type of the elements right. Now, how did we access the list right or maybe how did we uh, identify it is a list yeah we told right something like square bracket and then we told we can have an elements inside this separated by comma once it is a list you have lot of functions that are available lot of functions that are available right and how do you access all this list using the concept of indexing like you have an index here right and then given a list you can identify split them then accessing the list members everything can be done right. But whole of this whole of this how did we access it always using the concept of index always using the concept of index. But we have something called as dictionary, we have something called as dictionary where it is similar to list, it is similar to list with one additional facility where to access a member here, what is the requirement here to access a member it is index, it is a index, but to access a member here may not be an index a another concept we have another concept right ok. So, we look into it like what are dictionaries and how it is different from a list and how do we access an element inside the dictionary right. So, here we have something called as when it when wa what comes to our mind like when we hear a word called dictionary right. So, what comes to our mind is something concept of this right correct. So, this is a word and what is the exact meaning of this word is nothing but the concept of dictionary right. So, the similar concept of this is also applicable in the python programming. So, we will discuss more about the dictionaries like how dictionaries are created and how do we access how it is different from a list and why the concept of this has come into the python programming also. So, we will discuss like uh, dictionaries right uh, how it is different from a list, but before we jump to dictionaries. Uh, is there anything like value and objects? Yeah, definitely right. So, we will just discuss about that. So, we have something called as values and objects. Now, take this example A equal to banana, B equal to banana, where A and B are strings. A equal to 1, 2, 3, B equal to 1, 2, 3. So, where A and B are list. Now, we will use a function A is B. So, we are trying to check whether they are referring to a same are they referring to a same value or an object as that. Now, when you come when you try to check A is B for this example it is true right, but when it comes to list when it comes to list A is B it says false. Right? How come is that it is true here and it is false here? Now, now these are the values because of this concept here. So, now when you look at 
the first example a equal to banana b equal to banana now these are our string values it refers to value so the values are same hence we are able to get that as true right now but when it is an object a is a different object b is a different in spite they have a value but a is different existence b has a different existence so when i check a is b they are not pointing to same object they are two different objects hence they treat as a false right so we should we should be very careful in understanding this so when it comes to string yeah definitely they are right a is b but when it comes like this a is a different object b is a different object now what if i do some small modification what is that modification a equal to a equal to values 1 comma 2 comma 3 then i write b equal to a right so we are not b equal a new existence i am not doing so i write b equal to a and then i modify like b of 1 equal to 16 b of 1 equal to 16 so i modified b of 1 equal to 16 so i am according to me i am making this as 16 now what if i print a I'll say print a. Now, what should be my output? As b equal to a. So, for this object, I can use my name as a or b. So, in that case, a b becomes an alias for a. So, I do some modification using b. Actually, it is modifying my a. So, if I try to print a, I get a value 1, 16, and 3. Right? So, this is aliasing. So, aliasing is available in a list but not in strings right alias is available in list not in strings so what is aliasing here instead of referring to a i can refer to b do those changes automatically that is also reflecting in a right so this is the concept behind a value and an object now this value as a concept will help us in understanding dictionaries in more in detail right so we'll go further we'll talk about dictionaries now what is a list? We told list is also a collection, right? Which which is helping us what? Multiple different types put together as one name, right? Uh, what's a collection? A collection is a nice, it's a good concept in term because we can put more than one value, more than one value all together, right? Carry them all around in one convenient package. So in that case, what we did, what we did with the list, we told friends as one list we gave three members so instead of carrying all the three we carried only the friend as a member name right so we have a bunch of values in a single variable yeah very true right collection then we do this by having more than one place in the variable we have ways to find the different places in the variable so all these are the advantages of what collection is dictionary a collection that is the question right Okay. Now you you have a variable like x equal to two. X equal to two. Is it a collection? Definitely not. X equal to two is not a collection because it's only a one value, more than one value, more than one value we put together, and it is referred with what? One convenient name, right? So not a contain collection. Now list is a collection. List is a collection. Now, dictionary is also a collection. Dictionary is also a collection. Then, what are the differences or what are the changes here, right? So, if you look at list, it's defined as what? A linear collection of values that stay in order. Okay. They stay in order. So, if they stay in order, I can access each element by using index, by using the concept of index. Now, if they do not stay in order, if they do not stay in order, what will happen? If I use index first time, it will tell me the fruit. Fruit is my list name. So, index 1, fruit is what? Apple. Next time I access my fruit, they are not in order. So, in that case, it can be ma mango. So, at index 1, mango. First time index 1, apple. Next time index 1, mango. Even in spite, I have not changed, but it is automatically happening. Why? if they do not stay in order, but list is not like that, they stay in the order. So, hence 
we are able to access that element using index. But when you come down to dictionary, when you come down to dictionary, ordering we do not know. So, in the case, if a dictionary has a value like 4, 6 and 9, if a dictionary has a value, value, right, 4, 6 and 9. So, first time I access my dictionary, it will give me 4, 6, 4, 6, 9. Next time I access my dictionary, it may be like 9, 6, 4. Next time I access a dictionary, it can be like 4, 9, 6. We do not know. So, the order of elements inside the dictionary will not stay as it is. It can be the same, it can be modified, we do not know. So, if that is the case, then how do I access my element? What is my first element? If my first element is 4, I do not change. Next time I access, it should be still 4, but that is not happening in dictionary. So, indexing cannot be used in dictionary. Indexing in concept of index cannot be used. So, in that case, what should we have? We have our own labels to access our element, right? So, now, a bag of values, a bag of values, a collection of values where each value is attaching a label to that. Each value is attaching a label to that. So, in that case, how do I access an list element? Using the concept of index. How do I access an element of a dictionary? Using the concept of label. So, in that case, we as a programmer have to give a label. So, we need to attach a value for a label. Now, are we attaching a value for a label in terms of list? Definitely yes. How? But look at that. There, it is something like implicit, explicit. Look into it. My list name is T with a value 4, 6, 9. True. Now, are we attaching a value with a label? Now, these are our values. What are the label? Here, we are not attaching anything in list, but by default, it is taking as index 0, index 1 index 2. But when it comes to dictionary, we do not have this concept. We do not have the concept of indexing. So, in that case, what should I do? Sure. Now, uh, what are the changes that are required? One, this should be replaced by some other symbol to identify that it is a dictionary. Second, instead of indexing, we should have a something called as a label. Something as a label, where in most of the programming languages, wherever we have dictionary, we attach a keyword to that, right? That is nothing but key value pair. We tell key value pair. So, now in our example, what is value? 469. What is key? Key is nothing but label that we are trying to give. Label for 4, label for 6, label for 9. We specify and that is nothing but our key, right? So, user-defined index, user-defined index, we are defining our own index, that is our dictionary. You do not have an option, that is our list. So, we have more advantage when compared to dictionary. But what is that? For a programmer, we have to give value and also a label. But in terms of list, cross-check, what did we tell? Yeah, list, uh, fruits, we told mango, comma, apple, comma, banana, comma, something where we, we were concentrating only on the values. But if it is a dictionary, value is also must and also a, a label to that. So, that label will identify the value. That label will give us a value. So, you, you are trying to attach like what? Okay. You have a value, you are attaching calculator. You have a value, you are attaching that to a tissue and so on, right? So, doesn't, dictionary. Okay. One of the um, powerful uh, concept that is being adopted in many programming languages and which is also available in Python, right? Now, dictionaries are Python's most powerful data collection, right? So, the data collection list is also one among them. List is also one among them. But this is still more powerful because as a programmer, we have the complete flexibility of attaching a label to a value. Right? So, dictionary allows us to fast database like operations in the Python. So, it makes the operations more faster. Then dictionaries have different names in different languages, but normally like in uh, uh, PHP, 
the dictionary concept is nothing but associative array. Right? So, you have different things like example property bag in C sharp, but concept remains same. What is that concept? Either it is associative array or map or hash map or property bag. What is the concept? Concept is always key value pair, key value pair. So, for a value you always attach a key to that. This key is nothing but a label. So, we create a label, we attach that to a particular value. So now, how to create dictionary, how to create dictionaries and how they are different from a list, that is what our most important part is. Now, list square bracket, right, when it comes to dictionary, flower bracket, right, so open bracket, close bracket, it is a dictionary. So now, in the dictionary, what are the content? In the dictionary, what are the content? The content is element, element. Now, what element will contain? Element will contain a value, but we know in the dictionary along with the value, we will also attach a label, we will also attach a label. Label is nothing but a key, label is nothing but a key. So, in that case, each element, each element in the dictionary is nothing but key value pair. Each element in the dictionary is nothing but a key value pair. So, now you have what is the content? Key value pair. Now, how to differentiate between a key and a value? Very simple concept is colon. How to separate between a key value pair? So, in that case, you may have another key another value here. So, how do you separate? Comma, right. So, now we will try to use the concept of this. We will use the function dict to create a dictionary. So, what is the name of that? It is a variable name, right. So, we have used purse as a purse as a dictionary name as we had list for list we used uh, fruits as one example, tea as another example, similar to that we have used the name as purse. Now, how to tell that it is a dictionary? One concept number one where we can use a function called dict where I am creating a dictionary. Now, what are the members of it? I do not have anything. So, in that case it is an empty as we had empty list this is an empty dictionary, empty dictionary. Now, how to add a value? How to add a value? Right. Now, in terms of list, in terms of list, we cannot use the concept of index reason, what are the element that we want to add, whether you want that to be a first element or second element or nth element, all are missing, the data is completely missing. So, in that case, they created a function called append, which will help us to add an element to a list, right. But in dictionary, it is separate, right. Why it is dictionary, uh, we are still able to use the concept of arrays, reason, indexing is not used. So, we create our own label, we create our own key and we attach a value to that. So, now, purse, I am creating a label. So, I am creating a key. What is my key? Money is a key. What is my label? Money. And I attach a value to that, 12. So, what is my index? Index is money, not a number, right? So, now the whole concept has gone. We attach a label to a value. So, similarly, I am attaching a value 3 for a label candy. Similarly, tissues I am attaching value 74, right, done. Next, I will print purse, I will print purse. So, now purse is a dictionary with these key value pairs, right, this is a key, this is a value, okay. key value, key value. Now, how do I differentiate between a key and a value? Semicolon. How do I differentiate a pair? Comma, right, sorry, not semicolon, colon, it is a colon, right. So, now, so we will take up. When I print, I have a flower bracket which indicates that it is a dictionary. Then first member, money colon 12, tissue colon 75, candy colon 3. But according to me, okay, end with flower bracket. So, it is a, a dictionary. According to me, I think somewhere we have gone wrong or maybe 
this output by mistake I have made a mistake while uh, typing this values right. Candy should come here, tissue should be my third member, but here uh, tissue is my second member. Uh, uh, did I make a mistake while typing this? Definitely not. Now, then in that case, what is my understanding where it is going wrong, right? Now, in dictionary, how to access a first member, not an index. So, ordering will not be considered. So, first time when I access my print purse, this may be the value. Next time I tell print purse, this whole member occurrences can change. So, sequencing is not maintained. So, if you look at that, how are we adding first member, second member, third member. But when you display first member, second member, third member, but second member got interchanged with the third member. right? So, this ordering is not considered at all. It can be in any order. So, no ordering in the dictionary. Dictionaries are like backs, no order. So, you do not have any order. So, it can go, it can print in any order. Now, how to access? Same, because uh, we know how to update. So, similarly, we know. I tell purse of candy, it will print the value 3. It will print the value 3. Next, you want to do some modification. You want to do some modification. For this value 3, you want to add 2. So, how did you fetch? Yeah, this is the value 3. You add 2 to that and store it back again. Right? So, go back. Print purse. You will see monkey, sorry, money is 12. Money is 12. Then you come back to tissue. Tissue is 75 still. And candy, it was earlier 3, we added 2 to that and we got value 5, right. So, after adding all this, when I tell print purse, then will it be money as my first element? I do not know. It can be in any order because we do not have any ordering as such, right. So, I can create a dictionary, attach a key value pair to the dictionary and I can access the key and value separately, right. So, here how do I separate? Yeah, colon. How do I separate that key value pair with a comma operator here, right. Okay. So, here this is an example for a small comparison between a list and a dictionary. So, same example that we have taken, right. So, list we empty list, empty dictionary, but to add a value, we should use a function called append, right. But here, I need not worry about that. I can tell what is my label and the corresponding value I can add directly. Then I am printing it, order is maintained. So, 21, 183, order is maintained. But when I print, order is not maintained. In dictionary, order is not maintained. Then how do I, how do I access, right. Uh, this list name is first with 0, index equal to 0, 23, I am modifying a value. Yeah, I am printing it. I, I, I got the value. Here also, I am trying to modify the age. I am printing it. But here, updated, definitely yes. So, here also get updated. Here also we get updated. But here, order is maintained. Here, ordering is not maintained. And the uh, differences are what? We cannot use the concept of indexing here. Even it is an empty list. So, we use a function called append. But here when it is an in empty dictionary, still we can use this concept reason we are not attaching any index, we are creating our own index which is nothing but a label in case of dictionary. So, where we call it as what key value, key value. Now, this is about the list, this is about the dictionary. So, for list we have a value 21 and 183, Okay, where is it? Ah, here. 21 and 183, right. What is our key? Key are nothing but our index 0, 1. But when it comes to dictionary, we have a value 21 and 182, 21 and 182. And what are the labels? Age and course, age and course. But look at the occurrences of it. Order has changed. So, here no ordering. This is an example to just to show you that here, this is what we give. This is automatically taken and order is maintained. In our case, both we give order is not maintained, right. So, this example will show us the exact difference between a di dictionary and a list. Now, okay, uh, this we understood, right. We use a curly braces which tell start of the dictionary and end of the dictionary, opening curly braces and ending curly braces. And we have a key value pair, 
we have a key value pair. How do we differentiate? A key with a value is a colon. Right? Then we created an uh, uh, empty dictionary using what? Empty curly braces in our example, right? Something like this. Then we uh, we kept adding uh, the elements into that using the axis of what? Not using indexing, directly using the key and the corresponding values. Right? So with this, uh, we understood like okay, what are the exact differences between a list and a dictionary? And how do we create a list? How do we create a dictionary? Right? So uh, any changes that we do, how it is reflected? And one point to remember is what? Dictionary ordering is not maintained. So, in the next session, we will try to cover up like what operations that we can perform on the dictionary and what facility it gives us when compared to a list. Thank you.